Hello, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to download Anaconda and set it up for running Python codes. So first you have to visit anaconda.com. The spelling is A-N-A-C-O-N-T-A.com. So once you visit this site, you're going to see download uh, the Anaconda offerings here, and then you can download the Anaconda distribution. So download now. While you, uh, before you download, please ensure you have at least 8 GB of RAM and uh, i5 processor for Anaconda to work properly uh, and smoothly. If you have anything below that, it still works. However, it's going to cause a little bit of delays or uh, uh, some trouble executing things quickly, right? So please ensure that um, you have at least 8 GB of RAM um, and i5 processor. Now, I know that processors cannot be changed so quickly. So the best thing to do is uh, to upgrade the RAM to at least 8 GB or 16 GB if it is possible, right? So that way you will be able to run all the applications such as Anaconda, R, um, Excel, uh, SQL properly on your laptop or else some of these applications can uh, get buggy or crashing uh, very easily. Also ensure you have the latest uh, operating system on your uh, Windows. If the old versions don't work so well with the newer distributions. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's some of the precursors there. Okay, so now that you know about this background, what you can do is uh, there is a 3.7 version and 2.7 version. Previously, companies used to use 2.7 version and the other 3 version was unstable. However, now the 3.7 version is a lot stable and it's a lot better, right? So you can definitely start uh, using uh, this particular thing. Okay, so the, this is for the Mac OS installer, right? Uh, there is for uh, Windows also, right? This is for Mac OS and there is for Linux if you are using Linux, right? There's nothing better than working on Linux with uh, Python or Mac OS. But if you're on a Windows user, uh, the installation is going to be very simple. What you have to do is uh, Python 3.0 version. Um, you can choose 64-bit or 32-bit based on your requirement. Right? So if you do 64-bit, it's going to download this uh, application. Okay, so once uh, the application is downloaded, what you can do is uh, you can click on the exe file and install everything. Once the installation is done, what will, what will happen is you will see, a, uh, in my system it's already done, so you'll see uh, this particular icon coming in or it's going to be, okay I didn't place it on the desktop, but yeah, you will basically get this particular icon. So you can click on this to launch it. So it's uh, loading. So once it's loaded, it'll give you this pop-up. You can just say okay and don't show again. Um, but you'll come to this uh, particular browser. Now, uh, just quick guide on this particular this thing. You have your environment uh, and this is basically your Python, which, which is um, installed. Uh, and by default, Python installs all the packages that you require for data science. Anything extra, what you can do is you can just go simply say not installed and look for uh, the particular package you need to install right so for example let's say i have h2o or let's say line and move this okay, something else excel yeah so the, there is a lot of r xlsx read excel on all of these files right so some of the things some of the packages are not uh, installed but if in case you don't have anything available and something that I used during the courses, you can come to this particular say, and say not installed and um, install it, right? Right now this is the installed one and in this mostly all the packages such as NumPy, right? Uh, NumPy, Panda, uh, Matplotlib, 
right? All of these uh, are available. So that's one of the things. Uh, you can also create multiple environments. So um, in case you want to do, so I, I basically have one more environment for web scraping. This is specifically to uh, those packages that are used for web scraping, right? So um, you can have multiple environments ready with different set of packages that will uh, help you to work on a various set of projects. So that's a brief on this environments. You can launch the terminal here. Uh, it's an open terminal, open with Python, open with IPython, or open with Jupyter Notebook. Open terminal is the one that you want to uh, use to basically run this instant uh, instance of Python within uh, the, the terminal. Okay, going back to home, we're going to mostly be using the Jupyter Notebook, right? And um, with it, we have VS Code, Spider, and these are uh, again used for automations for, but learning, we just go with uh, Jupyter Notebook because it is inline um, coding and writing, right? So I'm going to say launch and it automatically opens it with your browser. Now, once you open this, uh, what happens is that basically the file structure that you have under documents, uh, not, not documents, basically under your this PC is visible here, right? So if I go to documents, Right? Just like I have within this place, documents, I have all the folders that are present here uh, within this particular place. Right. So what this means is now is that I can create one folder here. Let's say I'll say Python course, right? And the same folder will now be visible here. Right. So it's called Python course. Right, right now nothing is uh, visible here if you want to open a new code here you can say python not python 3 here and it basically opens a code here you can say first code and say rename so once you do that uh, you can simply say import pandas as pd run the code and it imports a particular library you can say 2 plus plus three and run the code and it basically runs the code now if you want to add a cell below you can say escape below escape above that's the thing if you want to delete a cell it's escape delete delete that is escape dd right escape dd is the command if you want to see more of the shortcuts you can say keyboard shortcuts and have a look at all the shortcuts that are available i highly you know invite you to learn some of the um, keyboard shortcuts that, that are really important. So once you do this, what will happen is it will list the Python codes uh, that are there within that thing. And it will also create um, a, a IPYNB file, which can be used um, to share or save these uh, Jupyter notebooks, right? Uh, the, the other thing is you can also copy and paste uh, already um, have, uh, all, all the materials that are available, right? So for our use. So for example, in these classes, we're going to use some of these. So, you know, I can, I'll be giving you this particular files in a zip and you can download them, place them in one folder, copy them and place it in the same folder that uh, I have here, like Python course. So when you paste it, it is basically, if you refresh this page, it will basically be available here. So you can just launch it, right? Um, Okay, um, that has just images. You can launch this and it basically loads the entire code that is available, right? So that way, uh, whatever files I'm working on, you can quickly open these files and start working on them also, right? So this way it will help us uh, stay on course and utilize the, you know, be hands-on rather than just listening. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, about it. Uh, one more idea I have. Uh, so whenever you start a particular code, right, I always invite you to file, save as, right, and give it a new name, like the first code and give it a date, like 18th May 2019. Okay. No such file directory. Okay, it doesn't do that. 
make a copy. The best way to do is make a copy because of uh, that thing. And then, yeah, you can just rename this to basically say 18th May 2019. And then it saves that particular uh, code in this place. So basically, you will have, uh, if you sort this uh, in descending order, you'll have a working copy and you'll have the latest version without any errors right so i often save a copy if i have no errors within that file um, it's all very often to lose a code in this uh, industry so it's very it's always easy to keep a copy of the files that you're working uh, right make a copy and work on that file so that you have a backup of the copy that uh, is original so yeah so that's about it um, now uh, once you've set up this and are able to open a file, write some codes like this, uh, we're going to then um, uh, start the Python basics. So I'm excited to see you there in these sessions. Thank you.